We are here with the 69 kilo national champion, Chelsea Savitt, and her coach, handler, partner, Andre. So to start off with, we'd like to just have you both speak about the day and how it went, um, and this would be a chance for Andre to brag about how good she did. Mm -hmm. go Should ahead. I go? <clears throat> Whoa, where's my voice? So today went really well. Um, coming into this meet, I had two goals. I wanted to win, and I wanted to punch my ticket for IPF Worlds, and both of those goals were reach goals for me. Um, my PR total coming into this meet at, in this weight class was 495 kilos. All time was 502 and a half, but that was in 2017, so I knew I needed to put 27 and a half kilos on my total to get a chance to go, as well as win the title. And um, I knew I'd have really stiff competition today. Uh, Claire Zay was really strong, and uh, she's put up that total before. Uh, so I knew I had an uphill battle today, but I also knew I had to come here and execute today. Um, I had no choice but to just come in and do the best that put everything together and put together as close to a nine for nine day as I could. And uh, yeah, I think we we uh, we went eight for nine. Um, but I really think attempt selection today was perfect and uh, ended up coming through with that national title and almost got the Carpino one. Uh, third deadlift just slipped out of my hand a little bit, but uh, I'm still really happy and proud of myself. I feel like I left it all on the platform today and just showed up and executed and uh, yeah, finally had my breakout day um, in powerlifting. I've been, uh, my first meet was in 2013 and uh, I've done the national championship many times. I meant to look up the number of times that I've done nationals prior to this so that I had a count, but I don't even remember how many I've done, but I've taken second so many times and I've just been climbing towards first for a really long time. I've always wanted it. So it's a really big deal for me that uh, I finally had my breakout day. I'm really, really happy and couldn't have done it without all the people in my corner. Um, Kristen Dunsmore is my, uh, she does all my programming. She's my coach. I text her all the time with just like nonsense. <laughs> um, and Andre's in the gym with me all the time. And uh, Bill McCarthy today, he's handled me many times before. And uh, Andre and Bill are just a great power team. And uh, my family came out and my friends came out. And uh, yeah, I just had, I finally had the meet that I've been wanting for a really long time that I never thought that I would get because I had that back surgery after 2017. Um, so this is a really big deal for me, a really big day. I'm really proud of myself. I guess I'll start. First of all, congratulations. Thank you. On being a national champion. That's freaking awesome. Thank you. And congratulations on having that breakthrough performance that you wanted. Thank you. I was you. wondering if you might be able to just discuss what it's like for two consecutive years now, going head-to-head, -head, right, with some very formidable opponents. And yeah. the second part of my question is, how did the mindset shift this time when you also had a number that you were kind of chasing? Ooh. Hmm. I don't think there was a, actually, I, I'll take that back. Last year was my first meet after my back surgery where I was really like taking it seriously. Like, whoa, I'm on the national platform again. It's been five years and I'm here. I, I was going into that meet and frankly, uh, just, I didn't know how my body would withstand a training cycle. Um, I didn't know how I would do in the 69 kilo weight class, which was the lowest weight I've ever competed in. Um, there were just a lot of like, I was also competing sumo, never did sumo in a meet before. So uh, at least on a national platform. So I went into that meet, um, frankly, with a lot of just, hey, I just want to get through the meet and, you know, have this be a good meet. And, uh, you know, my opposition was my coach so I knew it was going to be fun and I knew it was going to be close we were going to challenge each other um so I would say going into that meet I uh not that I wasn't sure of myself but it really was like what am I going to do like I really had no idea how I felt like there were just so many unknowns and uncertainties for me going into that meet that it was very exploratory if you will so I was very happy with that outcome. I felt like I did really well, but I did miss a first bench due to missing commands. And uh, I only got one deadlift and 
the first bench was probably just from being rusty from forgetting to listen to a command and uh missing my second deadlift was probably just should have been more realistic about weight selection so i feel like going into that meet i was sort of dusting off cob cobwebs uh versus this meet I did bench nationals six weeks ago, I did worlds last year, and I did nationals last year. So I had a few more meets under my belt, and those cobwebs were dusted off, and uh, frankly, had a lot of time to train. Um, even for nationals last year, I only trained like three months very consistently, and that was the most I had trained since my back surgery. Uh, so again, it was just so many unknowns and uh, exploratory, but it was still really fun. It was great. Um, so... This meet, I just felt a lot more sure of myself. Like, I knew that I was going to be a formidable opponent today. And, uh, you know, just based on some things that I did in the gym. And I'm someone who, frankly, I never lift less in the meet than I do in the gym. And I love that about myself. So <laughs> I knew I had done some big stuff in the gym. And uh, I lifted more today than... Yeah, I've done in the gym. You, you, had, you had a damn near perfect day. I had a damn near perfect day. So, yeah, today I just, I knew what I was capable of, and uh, I just knew I was not entitled to that title, um, how to work for it, and I was ready to bring it. So, a lot more fire this time, and certainty, but also uncertainty, because, you know, you can only control what you can control. If Claire, I think Claire, frankly, is stronger than me but uh, just didn't have the perfect day, whereas I think I had the perfect day today. Yeah. Or as close to perfect as it could have been, so. It's what you needed to win. Basically. It's what I needed, yeah. yeah. Other than, yeah, going off that, I know you said that you always hit more on the platform when you hit the gym, and you didn't post a lot of like your top end training uh, during your prep. What numbers did you hit in the gym prior? Uh, I hit a 185 squat. Funny, I did not even, I don't think I hit 125 bench. No, bench was suffering a bit actually for the past month after bench nets. Yeah. So you you actually peaked it really well for this meet. Yeah. And uh, it showed up nicely the day it needed to show up. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I actually hit two thirteen in the gym last week on deadlift, but it was wobbly, so it would have gotten three reds. Um, but two oh five moved really well. So that was like the thing that showed up out of nowhere that I was really not expecting that showed up one week ago. Um, actually in this prep, I was planning to pull conventional this meet and, uh, then, but I was keeping up my sumo training, um, just doing some volume. And then, uh, a week ago I had to hit a big squat, a big bench, and then just some sumo volume. Cause again, I was keeping both. Um, I was doing both of the training cause I feel like it's good to sort of, well, at least for me, I found that, um, the balance of the sumo and conventional training just seems to be good for me in terms of keeping my hips healthy, keeping my back healthy, and making everything stronger. So up until one week ago, we thought I was going to pull conventional. <laughs> and then I had some sumo volume to do, and I was like, holy crap, this is moving really well. And then I was supposed to do some sets of five, and then I... Andre was in the gym with me, and I was already there like three hours, and I don't think that he wanted to wait for me to go and pull some singles now on sumo, because <laughs> I had already hit my 185 squat. I hit a big bench. No, actually, I missed 125 last week. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I was like, I texted Chris, and I was like, hey, I know I'm supposed to be doing sets of five today, but... I just moved 170 for five, like, really well. I want to try a single. And uh, so then I pulled 185, 195, 205, and they all just flew. And we're like, well, mm -hmm. put 213 on the bar, and I picked it up, and the strength was there. There was just a little bit of a, a wobble at the top, so it would have gotten three reds, but I knew I had the strength. So, yeah, and I put up to 12 and a half today for my third attempt, which would have got me that Carpino, and... Got this, it was a clean lift, but, you know, just uh, slipped out of my hand at the very top. So I think it was the perfect third attempt, though, and it was what I needed to secure that ticket, which I didn't quite get. I'm going to be in that alternate pool now, but I think I set myself up really well um, in that alternate pool. So I just did, yeah, I mean, I think today really was my breakout day. Just every attempt was the right attempt, and, uh, yeah, so. Yeah, and to add to that, I think the... The biggest difference that we implemented after Worlds was that she started pulling sumo once a week and conventional once a week to do both. 
And adding the conventional deadlift thing back in actually brought up her squat strength. Now she was able to grind out squats better. Mm. And it also improved her sumo deadlift because she was actually pulling sumo less and beating up her hips less. And then actually the plan was to pull conventional up until last week when she finally had a breakout day on sumo. And uh, what I think did it was she skipped a week of pulling sumo, took two weeks off of sumo, and suddenly came back in there for a light day and had it. So she had a breakout on the deadlift only a week ago. We didn't think that, like, we weren't going to go above 205, but suddenly 212 became an option as of last week. Yeah. And the reason I skipped that sumo day is because I got sick and uh, I had two kind of crappy weeks of training because I was just, I don't know what was going on. I was just really sick. Also, we, like, lost power for a few days, and yeah. uh, that was pretty, that was not good. Um, so, yeah, um, that was awesome. And yeah, I didn't post that because, frankly, I, well, I was just listening to my handlers. They were like, no, 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 don't post your top end lifts. Don't show them what you got. Just bring you on the meat day. And, uh, it was a secret. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that deadlift was a big surprise for me a week ago. But then I was like, well, I'm going to keep this in my, in my back pocket. Nobody needs to know about it until they see me do it on the platform. So, yeah. And now you can take that and take it to your next meet. Yeah. It'll be less of a surprise at the next meet, but it's not a you, only get to surpri- you only get to surprise people once, I think. Maybe you'll have another 10 kilo surprise, though. Maybe. Maybe there will be another 10 kilo surprise. All right, well, I think that's it for Chelsea Sabbath. Unless anyone has any really burning questions, no, we'll let you go. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, cool. Yeah.